Hello. Welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. We've been away for a week. <laughs> yes. Um, we're, we're happy to be back. Yeah. And uh, this week is actually a special week for us because we hit 3,000 subscribers. Yes, thank um, you. Just right before we went away um, on our last video, mm -hmm. we hit 3,000. So yes. today we're going to thank you for that and we have a special prize it's to give away. special thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. in our subscriber tribute. So stick around for that. And we have a couple of uh, fun things. We have a Did You Know episode that's packed. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, those of you who have been asking about what we use on our retreats and for our finishing, we have our finishing kits mm -hmm. to show you during Gadget Corner. Yep. yep. So, Deb, what did yep. you do at the fair <laughs> for a week? Yes, it was a busy, busy time. But uh, Logan showed his, um, his two pigs and... They did really well. They got first and second place in his in their weight class, and this was his very first year showing. So we were very proud of him. He did a he did a great job. Um, <clears throat> and then he if, got some ribbons. He yeah. did. Yeah, first and second place for the pigs. Yeah. Um, and then we have a red Holstein. If any of you follow me on Instagram, you know Hank. Um, <clears throat> he's been with us since he was three days old, and Logan and Hank have had a bond from the beginning. I mean, like. Crazy bond. Well, right? bottle it's, fed him from day one, right? Right, but I mean, still, Hank is like a dog. Yeah, he's a cow <laughs> who thinks he's a dog. Um, and anyway, we have just all been in love with Hank all this time. And as Fair grew closer, you know, we were we were all getting a little little worried that we'd have to say goodbye to Hank. Um, so he was shown as a dairy beef, and um, Logan did great. Hank is a little small for some of the other cows that were shown like in comparison but um so he got fourth place but at the sale then um <clears throat> it was really cool uh who the person that bought hank actually gave him back to logan oh so we get to keep hank <laughs> they had a big sign that said save hank <laughs> yeah yeah so everybody was so excited we were all crying happy tears and hank <laughs> got to come home with us so he will forever be our pasture pet and um just You'll probably see him in every photo, and <laughs> he's just awesome. He's and it, anyway, we're just so happy. Uh, it ended up being a great week. It was awful weather. Mm, yeah. It was awful. Needed your wellies. Oh, and then some. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you could lose small dogs and children. In that <laughs> it was. It was bad. It rained. It was awful. It was so bad they didn't allow parking at the fair. Mm -hmm. um, they had to bus people in. I heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I have to tell you real quick. Um, uh, the night that everything sells, it ends up being a very, very late night. <clears throat> we were there late every night. but So we knew we had to take Hank home, but in order to get the trailers and things back to where you could get them back, there was only one area where everybody could pick up all the animals, okay. which obviously was going to take till wee hours of the morning. So Matt went and got the trailer and um, <clears throat> parked it across the, the street down by the Y, and called me because we were still in the barn with Hank and said, um, so are you comfortable, you, Logan, McKenna, walking Hank across the, uh, the field and then across the road and over here to the Y <laughs> so, that, so that we could load them? <laughs> so that's what we did. We felt like we were breaking out and stealing a cow because we were getting Hank out of the barn. McKenna had her phone with the flashlight on because it was pitch black going across this, this field, which, again, had eight inches of mud in it. So we're all slopping our way through this field with a cow, and cars are going by, and, you know, people are probably thinking, oh, my gosh, they're stealing a cow. <laughs> I really thought we were going to have a bright light shining on us at one point, you know. Like, Drop it! Stop! Stop what you're doing! Um, so... We got him all the way down, and then we had to cross the road. Well, you're standing there on the side of the road with a cow, yep. waiting on traffic to stop. I mean, oh my gosh, I just started praying, like, please get us there safely. And we finally did. We got him over there, we got him loaded up, and oh, brought him home, and then he was like, I'm so happy to be in the pasture again. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing about Hank that I find absolutely, I don't know, cute, cuddly. His whiskers curl. Uh -huh. He has whiskers that come out of his eye, well, eyelashes, whiskers, whatever they are around his face, <laughs> and they all curl yeah. in different directions. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that yeah. the first time I went, oh my gosh, he has curly whiskers. Yeah. Yeah, but he's so cute. So, anyway, it was a very busy week, but it was a lot of fun, good experience, and <sighs> so here we are. <laughs> yep. 
but th anyway, thank you for everybody on Instagram who have just, you know, watched Hank from the beginning and, um, supported him. Yeah, supported him and everything. So yeah. that, that was really cool. And now okay. it's time to pick out new ones. Yes. Now we have, uh, two new, um, cows that will be coming and then two new pigs. Yep. I think the moral of this story is don't be one of their pigs. The cows come back. The pigs <laughs> don't come back. We like our bacon. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's hard. It is really hard because when you're there, those kids work so oh, hard yeah. for so long. And you can tell that there are some kids that really have bonded with their animals. And uh, it, it's hard, yeah. you know? It would be really it's hard for me. It's just hard. Yep. But there is just something about Hank. And I don't, I mean, every animal, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get. No, Hank was definitely different. Yeah. And Hank's relationship to Logan is what was really special. Yeah. 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 I mean, Hank, seriously, most cows, when they're in the meadow and you walk into the meadow, they kind of like stare at you. Like, <laughs> well, what are they doing here? Or they'll back away from you or something. <laughs> Hank, <laughs> you walk in the meadow and you're like, here, Hank. Well, he gets up wherever he is, comes running to you, just like a dog. <laughs> you know, um, he lays down and sleeps with Logan in the meadow. He loves to cuddle. I swear if he was potty trained, he'd be on our couch. <laughs> so he's just different. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, we have some comments. Um, yeah. I wanted to thank everybody also for their sweet comments on the decorating video uh, and Matt's talents as a woodworker. Thank you very much. Um, that was really fun uh, to read through everything. And I wanted to say, uh, answer a few questions. Um, Sandcastle Cottage and also Layla, they wanted to know what I stitched my bell pool on my, my um, the one that says autumn, it was hanging on the door. Stony Creek. <clears throat> Stony Creek. Um, Sandcastle Cottage actually wanted to know if it was an afghan that was then cut. No, but that's cool. <laughs> no, it's actually just called Fireside. The fabric is called Fireside. It does look like Anne cloth, though, that Yeah, that afghan. so, I mean, I mm -hmm. can understand why she asked that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and it's 18 count. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, man, is that a fun stitch if you do it. It is a lot of fun. I, that was one I couldn't put down. A lot of fun. And then Robin Watley and Mary C, they wanted to know if the class piece that I showed, it was in my bedroom, and it had the words give, believe, renew, um, inspire. inspire on it. They wanted to know, and even I think a couple other people wanted to know if that was still available. We have not found it yet on the Stony Creek website, but what we can do is just link the Stony Creek website and maybe you can investigate it a little bit more. We haven't found that it's available, but yeah. Uh, maybe there's somewhere, someone out there that has it or, or you can get it. I, I don't eBay. Know. I yeah. would definitely keep your eyes open for eBay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and, and Marilyn was the, was the lady's name, yeah. uh, the designer. So if you go out to Stony Creek, you'll, you'll search around a little while. You'll find class leaflets and patterns that are released to the public mm -hmm. now, but that wasn't one that we found. So. Okay. All right. And then Tony stitches in KY, which would be Kentucky. Um, she wanted to know how do I decide whether or not I'm going to frame a piece or make it a pillow. Usually when I pick out a pattern, because I, whatever I'm picking out the stitch, I'm obviously going to be putting it in my house and decorating with it, unless it's for a gift. But usually everything I stitch, I'm, I'm stitching it because I love it and I want to keep it. So I do have an idea of where it's going to go um, and if it's going to go in a certain place in my house. I'll automatically know, you know, okay, well, do I need extra pillows or should I frame this one? So I don't know if that helps you or not. It doesn't really have anything to do with the size for me of the pattern. It's just basically when I see it, I've already seen it somewhere in my house, actually. So then I just go from there. Yeah. Um, Vicki Ulrich, she wants to know, <laughs> she wanted to know what is a, um, a mud sale. When I think I was talking about getting a bunch of things from a mud sale. A mud sale around here is um, a sale, sales that we have all spring. <clears throat> it's every Saturday in the spring. They usually start late um, March and go all the way through April and May. And the reason why they're called mud sales is because we usually have a very wet spring here, and this year was awful. It's just like a little version of the fair. And every single sale then, you know it's just going to be awful weather, and you're usually wearing your boots. It's just, and this year lived up to it. I think every weekend we went. It was truly a mud sale. I remember But the that. really cool thing about a mud sale is 
it's not you know when you go to an auction you have one auctioneer usually and that auctioneer takes care of everything at a mud sale they always benefit the fire companies so that's why you have one a weekend because all the local fire companies are having a mud sale and you have many auctions going on at once. There'll be lots of tents set up and you'll have the antiques auction over here. You'll have the um, housewares over here. You'll have the quilts and the fabrics inside. Usually they have that one inside the fire hall with an auction going on. Um, they'll have the farm equipment going on, the wood, but all the auctioneers are auctioning at the same time. So I didn't that's know the really... they had that variety there. Oh. I thought it was just equipment. Oh no. Okay. They have so much stuff. So, and they even have a tent where it's like hunting equipment fishing i mean they have it spread out so matt and i are usually always separated because we're on our phones and it's like okay you check out that tent okay i'll do and we're texting back and forth about what'd you find what'd you find how much you know it's really fun so that's that's a mud sale we absolutely love going to them all spring long anyone we can make it to we go it's a lot of fun um linda beal um Oh, I wanted to say thank you. She let me know where I could find the music buttons for my mom's um, bears that I need to replace in their ears. Thank you. Um, and then Janice Boucher, she wanted to know what was our size favorite needle. Hmm. And I thought, well, that's a hard one yeah. because it just depends what you're stitching. Um, I think Liz and I feel the same that if we're stitching over one and it's, you know, any, well, any over one stitching, we like petites. Yeah. Um, and if it's a very high count thread count, like a 40 count, then I want to use one of those bar or excuse me, ball, ball. tipped beading needles. Yeah. yeah. Those are awesome. And the reason is because the tip is so rounded that you can slide it just slightly to get in between the threads on the back when you're finding your hole. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. Um, but because I also do the sewing method, if it's a piece I can hold in my hand, um, I like the petites because they're easier to do that with uh, than the standard size. Okay. But and I'll use a 26 petite yeah. if I'm on a lower count mm -hmm. fabric. Yeah. And I don't do the sewing method. I stab. Mm -hmm. So, and I still like the petites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, um, she also wanted to know the one pillow I showed in the living room that had my monogram in the middle, the E, and it just had the really pretty border to it that kind of looked lacy and intricate um she wanted to know how if i'm doing a pattern like that how do i keep um from being overwhelmed with with the with the design the pattern um she tends how to get lost how can you lost. find your place yeah she yeah. tends to get lost with patterns like that for me that's where my highlighters come in that's as soon as i stitch you know that row or if i'm working across or if i'm working down i immediately highlight it so that I know what I have stitched that keeps me focused and see, Liz yeah I do it the opposite way on a pattern like that because when I look at a pattern um, let's say uh, well I'll just use this pen let's say these lines of, of thread names are uh, rows of symbols I get I look at one of those patterns like that pillow and I get lost in trying to find where I just was while I'm stitching. I'm looking for where I have to stitch, not what I haven't stitched. Mm -hmm. So I use um, a magnetic board and uh, a magnet uh, line minder. And I just slide it down one line at a time because on a pattern like that with all one color, I just go the whole way across mm -hmm. and back. Yeah. And so I I do it one line at a time. Yeah. And I know... and. Oh, heaven forbid somebody knocks say, my magnet because oh, at that point I'm having what a, a match good joke I could play on you. So like if we're away and you have that set up, I can come and move your thingy for you. <laughs> Watch your bed at night. <laughs> I, won't, I won't do that. The, the thing I do cruel. though, what I do after, like when I get far enough, I check off the rows to the left. Okay. Like then I know where my, my marker goes. Okay. But it's easier for me to look at where I am stitching, mm -hmm. not... Yeah. what I have stitched. So, so I guess it depends which way it's easier for you to look at it because yeah. I'll, I'll look at it completely different. I want to know what it is I have stitched because then when my eye looks at that chart, because I've highlighted it, whatever is showing up in pink or orange or yellow or whatever color highlighter yeah. I'm using, my mind doesn't even focus on that anymore. All I see is the things that are not highlighted. And you can pick so, out the row you're looking at, whereas when I do it, all those rows beneath it 
drag my attention mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. That's my yeah. distraction. Yeah. So I guess it just depends how your brain works. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm but sure it's an optical are, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. people who can and can't see those three-dimensional posters. <gasps> yes. That's it's kind of the same thing. Or those ink blot things. Yes. You know, where people can see different things. Colors. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and the, yeah, the Rorschach ink blot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is another video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, do you have any? I do. Comments? Okay. I do. I do. Um, Let's see, we had a, a question from Cindra Huddleston about my Magna Clips. Um, you were trying to find them. You said you were having trouble locating them. And the person that was going to need them was going to use them in conjunction with their own glasses. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I wear them, because I actually have bifocals. And they come down far enough that mm -hmm. they give me further magnification at the bifocal level, but I can see out the prescription level in the top part of my glasses. Um, they range in power from one all the way up to five. So that's a, a, a really broad range. Some stores only carry them like one, two, three, four, five. Some stores mm -hmm. even have two, 2.25, 2.5, and they actually get much more graduated. Um, I'll try to find a store that is selling them and link it in our description box for you. Um, but the best thing to do would be to maybe use a pair of just readers that are one magnification or two and let them try those over their regular glasses before you order the Magna Clips. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll know where she holds her fabric or her stand in conjunction with her vision. Um, and you can get good. those for a dollar at the Dollar Tree um, mm -hmm. just to test them out, the little readers. Yeah. Um, so I will do that, Cindra. I'll, I'll link that in the description box. Um, I had a question from Valerie Monahan about my stitching kits and which ones did I prefer when I stitched them as opposed to other ones. Um, I only have a couple that I've completed the entire kit at this point, but um, I had two that I thought about when you asked that question. And one of them, and it's for two completely different reasons. Um, one of them is by Shepherd's Bush. That's the one um, called the Shepherd's Fold. And it was released in, I think, six different parts. And the first part was the top to the shaker box. And then each other piece that came out is either a fob or a cushion mm -hmm. or a pin cushion mm -hmm. that goes along with it. The nice part is that now that it's out, you can choose what you want to keep in your shaker box and just stitch the pieces you want. Um, I subscribed to it when it was first coming out, so I had an automatic shipment with each piece, so I have the whole set. Um, this I like because I like the fact that the shaker box contains the rest of the pieces when you're done stitching mm -hmm. it. I like having that all together. A completely different one um, and different in the sense that you actually are the one that creates the box as well as stitching the design is by um, Manny Didana if I pronounce that correctly um, it's obviously Italian but I just love this little it's called um, blue Quaker sewing basket and it does come with the laser cut handle and you stitch it and these this is two colors it's beautiful I love those colors and they're they're a lot of fun it's very easy once you start the pattern you just keep working across it goes very quickly mm -hmm. um, but the difference is this one I'm going to be putting the whole thing together it doesn't come with a box that you set the piece into mm -hmm. you actually create the the container itself and then you create the lid and you piece it together. So I wanted the experience of doing all the handwork and the finish work when I picked this up. So um, if that didn't get more complex, um, I would say Valerie, give it some thought as to whether you want to stitch the design and have the piece pre-made or whether you want to learn to do some of the handwork. Mm -hmm. um, and check the pattern on some of these overseas ones because sometimes they're written in a different language. Um, a lot of the French ones are French. Mm -hmm. You and I have a couple of and, those and patterns. And they don't have the... No. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, mm, yeah, mm, yes. So um, now Google will translate words, and I don't mind on a pattern that I'm just stitching the image because I can translate mm -hmm. some of the words. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'd want to follow the the directions for finishing no. something in another language no. at this point. So check it out. Um, By the end of it, though, you will become bilingual. <laughs> There's another plus. You will learn, oh, darn, in more than one yeah. language. <laughs> Um, there are some other words. Charlene Hall, uh, thank you for checking back with me about that magazine, and I sent you an email. Um, I just totally forgot to respond. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Beth, and we've had a couple of attempts at your last name. Um, yeah. Tortelot. Uh, tor 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 um but I think you know who I mean. If I say you're looking at my lap stand, uh, the, the Q-Snap lap stand, mm -hmm. um, if you go on Amazon and Google lap frame or lap stand uh, needlework, any of those combinations, you'll see not only the R&R &R Productions version um, that I have, you'll also see a new version that's a, like a knockoff. Um, and there is also one... Uh, distributor now that's licensed in the United States for that lap stand and they're located in Florida so if you google that R&R Productions lap stand I'm sure they'll come up and the Canadian store that I bought it from at a convention is called Gittas G-I-T-T-A-S um, and I'll stick a link in for that too, for you to yeah. to track down. The do you know anybody stands. that has the knockoffs? Do we know if they're as good or any good? I do not. I have not heard a thing yeah. from anybody. I know people who have purchased them. Okay. Because they referred me to. Okay. Amazon to look at them when I first mentioned I wanted the larger size. Okay. But I have not but, actually asked. Okay. Um, how they compare. Um. Pam Lacey. Um had asked me what the name of the pattern was for a piece I had finished and shown, but I hadn't actually uh, done the final finish on it. It was just the pattern was completed, the stitching. And it was a, an armchair and it said relax. And I finally located the pattern and I mentioned mm -hmm. it in the last video. And she asked me um, what I was going to do with it. And that was fun and perfect timing because, let me just yeah. grab that one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because I got my finished piece back. I was waiting on this. Um, mm -hmm. I think I had alluded to the fact that I sent it to Faye Rigsby at Carolina Stitcher to um, put together for me. And she sent it back. I told her that I was going to send it and leave the fabric and everything up to her. Mm -hmm. And this is how she finished it for me. It looks awesome. It is very neat. Oh she put gosh. it into that I love uh, her fabric choice. bag. And it has that sort of Moda. I think that's Moda's fabric there. Um, I have another project bag that has this type of pattern in a gold. And then the back is a, a solid. And then she lined the inside with a, a contrasting fabric as well. So, I can't wait. Yeah, when we go so away great. next week, I'm going to take my stitching with me in my new project bag from <laughs> Bay. And... We're also going to take something else with us, right? Mm -hmm. We think, we're not sure, but given the pattern that we're stitching for pre-stitch, we think there might be a strawberry in our future. Possibly. So we're going to take along um, some strawberry toppers that um, Deb first found at the Merchant Mall. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ordered some from Faye, and she sent these along with my finished piece. Um, it's two different colors. And they just fit on top of your strawberry when you're done making it. Um, so we're going to tuck these away. I'm going to take both colors and see which one I like. <laughs> um, but when we show you the pre-stitch, I think you'll know what we mean about it looking that way. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> thank you very much yeah. for asking. Yeah, um, that Pam turned and, out so great. Yep. And I will put a link to Faye's site, too. Um, check out her finish work. She does a... Oh, yeah. She does a great obviously job. Obviously does a, a wonderful job. You have a bag of hers, right? That you got. Did you get a bag at the Merchant Mall? That, no, were no, they that, out? Uh, what I wanted was that she had a project roll where you like actually lay your right. project and roll, and it had that 
black and red and it had the truck on it. Yes, that's what I knew yeah. it was a truck, but I didn't remember if you got a bag yeah. with that on it or what it was but you were I, looking but at. But I didn't get it because I didn't find Faye until the very end. Yep. Remember, I remember you that. had found her earlier. Yep. And my bag that I got was from someone else. Yeah. That big, huge one. Yeah, that the I, oversized. Yeah, that yeah. oversized one. I did get a bag, but I didn't get anything like yeah. that from Faye. So um, the project roll. Yeah, that was That really was beautiful, neat. though. Oh, my yep. gosh. That finish. That was really beautiful. So. And I will put Faye's link in the description box. She, um, she does all those things we just talked about and then some. And then some. And she has a, uh, I believe, a Facebook as well as an Instagram. Mm, okay. Um, let's see. And I think I had one more comment. Um, and I'm going to save this comment um, until we do our Did You Know? Mm -hmm. It's from Bits of Stitching, and you'll know what I'm talking about because you made the comment. Um, so that'll come a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And at this point, well, you had... Oh, yes, thank you. We have a correction. Did with pointing <laughs> by the finger. I gave her the um, finger again. <laughs> oh, yes. This is not the first time you've done that either. Um, we showed... Deb has this pillow, my pattern that she had seen and she stitched it up before I have mm -hmm. um it's a pillow I thought it was by Cedar Hill and I couldn't find my pattern and when I finally did it's by Knotted Tree it's called Fall Floral Sampler so my reference to it in our previous description box was not the right designer so I just wanted to bring that up okay. and let you know that I had that mixed up and I also wanted to say thank you we wanted to say thank you very much to Betty um very sweet she sent us very very sweet patterns that we do love thank you betty and yes. um just a nice note to go with that thank you and also um one of our subscriber tribute winners um daylene wilkinson she sent us a very nice thank you card so thank you <laughs> thank you for your thank you <laughs> <laughs> lots of thanks to go around yes all right so should we show yeah let's do our, our homework, homework? Mm -hmm. all right and then I'll show my homework boo-boo. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I've got a line of needles. <laughs> <laughs> when you see this, you'll know I don't want to lose track of my ballpoint. <laughs> Feed needles. Right, should we, is there a way we can put them all up? I don't know. Can you, no? can yes. you hold from yep, here? I think so. I can it do won't it. won't dump? Mm, it might, but we'll see. All right. Got them? Yep, I think so. There we go. So this is the larger piece. Um, mine's up here and this is Liz's and then this is the finished second piece this is as far as Liz got on her second piece yep that's why we were thinking this may possibly be a strawberry just because of the triangle ish the design yeah, yeah. <laughs> we so. did we have in the past stitched a strawberry in a pre-stitch for another designer that's what mm -hmm. kind of made us scratch our head and say so anyway Ooh. yep I am finished with homework did I just take yours I think you did you took Let's see, mine's on the bottom, oh, yeah. yours yeah, yeah, on yeah. top. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Look, our fabrics are a little different color. Yeah, tiny bit. This one, yeah. Yeah, that was the, yeah. okay. the save me. Okay. Um, yeah. But It's cute, though. Yep. Very cute. And this will not be, now that I look at it, it will not be a really Sated. big. If it is. Watch, we'll get there and it'll, it'll be completely Yeah, it'll be something it'll we be never something thought completely of. Different. Oh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, if it is a strawberry, it's, it's not a big strawberry. It's going to be cute. It's going to be little strawberry. Cute, we have cute, no cute. idea nope. what these are going to be used for. Nope. nope. Except we're going to have them done. <laughs> well, you do. I'm not there yet. Yes. And if you saw the video where I first got my homework and I had started on it, because um, it was in my mailbox before Deb's, um, I made the mistake of stitching it um, incorrectly, and that's all I'm going to say yeah. because I don't want <laughs> I anybody else to let me head, know yeah. how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> And get somebody started in the wrong way. But because of my boo-boo, um, I was able to get another piece of fabric from Sarah at Salty Yarns. And um, and this came to mind. Deb made the comment that it might look cute in this mm -hmm. watch fob. And it does. The, I'm still struggling, though, with what I would do. Whoops. It slipped out of my thumb. Just a minute. It in there again. I didn't want to cut the fabric yet because I'm not completely sold to finishing it this way, but that's what I had done, and it sits exactly in the center wow. of that little watch fob. 
It's got the three flowers and the birdie. Isn't that, that amazing? Yeah, that is cool. Now the question was, would this be too big if I used a ribbon as a fob for a pair of scissors? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. You'd have all fob, no scissors. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to cut with You'd my fob. You'd be conking people in the head with your fob and <laughs> yep. you whip it out. And so I'm not sure whether I just, because I don't, I wear this with something else I stitched in it when I go to retreats and things just because it's fun. And I don't know if I would wear it enough. But you don't know what we're doing yet with our thing. Mm. I wouldn't finish this yet. Who knows if this big one is going to, I don't know, sit on maybe the top of some kind of something, box. Something where you could then kind of pin that to the side hanging off the box and it would yeah. be pretty. So that's why I haven't cut it. Yeah, I would wait. The to other finish thought it, but I it had, does look really great in there. The other thought I had was if I finished it like the fob yeah, from just, our class where I made it into a cylinder mm. and and frayed it on the ends mm -hmm. and just put batting in it, then it would just hang off my mm -hmm. scissors that way. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's still options. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I think that's really cool. See, there are no mistakes in stitching. Just <laughs> nope. Just hang on to all of just it. Just a new idea. <laughs> That's yep. right. Yeah. So since it was fair week and I, I did not get a lot of stitching done, other than I wanted to get my homework finished because I really want to stitch some fall things, which I'll show you what I'm itching to stitch. <laughs> she itching. brought it. I'm itching for some stitching. Itching. Um, Stitches. But I did a little bit more on my um, my hands-on design is stitch every day. Which she didn't do. Which did I did not do. <laughs> um, so this is what I have so far. I finished um, the whole design almost, except uh, I need to put the white in, fill in the star right there with the white. And also, I still need my thread and my needles for over here. But I am going to do my words over one. Um, so I ripped out, I had had my E started over two, I ripped that out, and I'll be doing that in the dark brown uh, over one. Then I have an idea about finishing this. It's not going to be a drum, I don't think. As long as it fits where I'm thinking. We shall see. So. Future channel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I did stitch a little bit. I had um, another round robin um, come to me. And I this one's going in the mail. It's coming, Becky. <laughs> um, I did my parts down in the... Aww. The EC there. I got that one finished. And every one of them that's come. That is so pretty. Because of how the borders. Mm -hmm. My border was extended. Mm -hmm. So my initial motif fit differently. It never occurred to me that's going to be different oh. than anybody who didn't extend okay. it. And so I've had to change them just a little. And then some people did or didn't want initials and states. Mm -hmm. Which changed my motif because initially I had my state and my initials worked into the actual design that I did. So, each time I've done it, I've had to just re-position uh, things a little bit. So, they're not that all identical. so pretty. It is. This thread, by the way, this thread that um, mm. Pat is using is a sulky. It's beautiful. Petite thread. And it's all one thread, like a, like stitching with a flower thread. Mm -hmm. So, that one's going to be gorgeous. She has, uh, mm. Pat is in our group and has um, a, a real affinity for red. And so she has all kinds of patterns that she's put up in her home, um, sort of like a wall of red. Oh, wow. It's very interesting to look at. Hmm. Um, and then I worked a little more on my RETM Halloween accident. Mm -hmm. What was that actually called? A wicked accident, it's <laughs> called. And, um, and it has a witch falling into a pumpkin, her legs. You can just now see that those are stockings on legs sticking out the top, and that's the bottom of the boot right here. And then down here is her hat, and then this pumpkin fills in. So I, I have the pumpkin left to do in a little bit more fill in on the hat mm -hmm. and the feet. So, that's cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. And that's on Ada? This one is on Ada, yes. Okay. I bought, and I believe it's... Um, Looks like an over -dyed. It's or called a... Light Country Mocha. It's pretty. Yeah, it yeah. is over -dyed. It's... It's got a little bit of modeling to it. Pretty. And I have that light country mocha in linen as well, and mm, yeah. I like it in yeah, linen. Yeah, I do like it. I think I have some of that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I had one other little guy that I pulled out just to show you. This is so cute. 
Um, you worked on him last jamboree. Uh, yeah, actually, um, and he is the just part of a Barbara Anna pattern that has a row of Halloween characters. Um, I just did the pumpkin at the bottom with the Quaker That's so cute. emblem. I just thought it's adorable. Yeah. I still haven't figured out exactly how I want to finish it, so it's still sitting here looking at me. Um, but it in its original pattern, I think there's a ghost and then a raven. Is that all that's on top Is of it? Is there him? a black cat maybe? Huh? Maybe I a cat. Know. I think there's three yeah. other things in the cute, in the stack with the pumpkin. But yeah. anyway, I just did him because I thought he was cute. Oh my goodness! I yeah. wanted to do something small. So adorable. Yeah. So that was my very cool stitchy week. <laughs> All right. Not a oh, lot. Oh, so I'd like to show you since I did get my homework done some things I'd like to stitch in the fall. Yes. Um, I did purchase. We went away for McKenna's birthday weekend, the weekend right after we were finished shooting our last film or video <laughs> <laughs> we shot our film <laughs> um and we went to the beach um my aunt has a, a place in avalon new jersey well one of the ladies in my round robin group tina she lives in new jersey and we we had been instagram friends for before the round robin so we started talking that since we were all coming down there we could meet up and McKenna wanted to go to the Cape May Zoo. And I was jealous. No. I am jealous. I know. But she's going to come see us. Okay. So we can all stitch together. All right. Yes. Okay. It's all good. It's all okay. right. And we did miss you very much. I carried around a sign that I had Liz's face on the top. And, <laughs> and <we laughs> no button? No. No, no, no. no. You were. No you campaign were button. Yeah. We missed Liz. But that was so cool. I got to meet Tina face to face. And we had a great day. We hung out at the zoo. And it was funny because I stuck my whole family on her. I mean, we were all there. Matt, Logan, McKenna, McKenna's boyfriend, Connor, his brother, um, Cameron, who is Logan's best friend. I mean, she got to meet the whole family. And I got to hang out and meet her youngest, her two youngest daughters and her husband. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and yes, she will be coming over our way so right. that we can all stitch together. All right. So then... Um, yeah, it was later that afternoon then we went into Cape May um, and McKenna and Connor were, were walking around and there's a stitching store in Cape May. So I wasn't going to go into it, but then I thought, well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going. I just knew when you said Tina was meeting you, I thought so much for the zoo. No, we be... were good. Oh, we went through the whole zoo. I bet you we did. did. But I knew there was another subtext we did. We to did. that zoo Because I didn't even think I was going to go. But anyway, I went. <laughs> because... <laughs> Also, on Tina's Instagram, she did um, Olga's Autumn Stocking by Plum Street Sampler. And I've seen it done before, I think, but man, when she showed that picture, because of the fabric she stitched it on, I just fell in love with it right away. And I, it's going to look so good hanging off my fireplace mantle. I really just can't wait to get that started. So I did have to purchase that before our trip. I went in there and I found it. And um, I didn't get the fabric for it yet. Or the thread. I'll probably pick up the thread when we're down at Salty Yarns. But um, I want to open this up and start stitching on that when we're there. So is that over two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It will, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stitch it over two. So if it's yeah. over two. Yep. That is so pretty though. So it's about what? 20 inches long? Hmm. Three. They stitched it on 36 count. Okay. So it depends what count you stitch it on. Okay. You know. So. I think Tina did hers, I think, on 32 count. Okay. I'll have to double check with her, but... There's 330 stitches or 333. That is such a pretty pattern. And, and I know other people, you know, pretty. have shown...